Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Last week, we actually over the last few weeks, we have spoken uh, about the purpose of the church, universal. And today, I want to bring this down personally to us, uh, to the church local, the fellowship here at Jesus Community Church. Um, Somewhere there's a pen. If you have your Bible, go ahead and open up to Matthew 28. So, over the course of a couple weeks, I asked you guys what the church is supposed to be about. And what we uh, came up with is the church functions in two directions. We function internally. I don't like this seat. It's too short. Internally, meaning that we minister one to another, um, and we do that through several different ways. Um, internally, we also worship corporately, and again, what is worship? Worship is not just the song service, it's the entirety of what we do. Um, worship consists of, yes, the, the music, that helps us to enter into the presence of God, to focus our heart and our mind on the things of God. Uh, but prayer is also worship. Uh, the reading of the word is also worship. Uh, the giving of your offerings is worship. Okay? Uh, as a matter of fact, we read in the Old Testament that there were several occasions where the nation of Israel was called to give a special offering. Uh, one of them was when they first built the tabernacle, and uh, then later they had several of them where they wanted to, needed to do some repairs on the temple, and so they called for people to come and, and give offerings. And, and what's really cool, if you read those stories, they're so excited to be able to give. I mean, they are, it's a party. Whoa, Dennis and Jeannie are up close. <laughs> um, as a matter of fact, in one occasion when they were getting money to repair the temple, they actually had to tell the people to stop giving. We've got enough. We've got plenty. Um, so, we see that there are many ways that we worship God. Um, inside the church, we function to edify and build one another up. Uh, we worship corporately. Um, now we have several different things that we do in this church that we encourage you to participate in. Um, of course, Sunday service. Uh, we also have prayer service Wednesday nights at seven o'clock. Uh, we have the ladies Bible study uh, Wednesday morning uh, at 9.30 at Vivian's. She didn't move Vivian's. Thank you, Vivian. You're my rock. Um, at Vivian's, uh, we have the brothers meeting for the men Thursday <coughs> evenings at 7 o'clock in the activity center. And in each of these coming togethers, we are worshiping God. Now, let, let me rephrase that. We should be worshiping God. Okay? Um, so internally, we have function whereby we assist one another in our growth, in becoming what God has called us to be. But that's unfortunately where most churches stop. They, all of the, the activity, all of the function 
that they do is geared internally. And we do need to function internally, but going to Matthew 28, and I, I know you guys already know this, most of you could probably quote it. Um, this is the end of Matthew's Gospel. Um, this is the last thing that Matthew records Jesus as saying. Um, so jumping down um, to verse 16, I'm just going to back up to 16 and read a little bit so we get context. Uh, it says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, okay, so let's pause there for just a second. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. There's obedience, okay? As a believer, we talked last week a little bit about this. Um, two things are required unto salvation, and as a result of uh, salvation, there will be several things that, that uh, clearly show that salvation is real in your life. Um, and we talked about endurance and obedience. Um, so they are obeying, and then it comes down, and when they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. Now, I just want to point this out to you real quick. You know, Thomas gets a, <coughs> he gets beat up much more than is, is necessary, okay? Because what do we call it? Doubting, Doubting Thomas. None of the disciples believed at first. <laughs> Not one of them. Martha shows up. He's risen! Oh, I got to see this for myself. You know, Peter and John take off to see the empty tomb. John wouldn't even go in. He stops at the door. Peter goes in, and then, then you know, after Peter showed that everything was cool, then John went in. Okay. Um, so they, they all doubted in some manner, all right? So quit picking on Thomas. Um, but some doubted. Now, in verse 18, we have the last thing that, that Matthew records as their interaction with Jesus. Uh, and Jesus came and said to them. Now, when they went where Jesus directed, he showed up. Okay? Now, if they had stayed in Jerusalem... Back in the upper room, um, they would have missed him. They wouldn't have been where he was. Okay? So, again, obedience. And Jesus came to them and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Okay, so what is Jesus doing right here? He's establishing his authority. He's establishing for them his right to say what comes next. Now you think about that. All authority in heaven and on earth. So what is not under his authority? Yeah. I love it when the Bible speaks in absolutes. Okay? Because there's no room for doubt. Okay? Um, so he, he says, all authority has been given to me. Therefore, he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, back up to the start of verse 19, go therefore. Um, again, this is not a directive to get up and go. This means as you are living, as you are going through life, do this. Okay? Um, it, it's really easy for us to pass this off to the missionaries and say, hey, you know what, we support a number of missionaries and they're doing the going. No, this is, this is how we are to engage in the lives that we live. All right? So, um, as you are going, as you are living life, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, for those that uh, had an issue with... Uh, Jesus being equal to God, being God and equal to God, uh, he right here makes it very clear that there is a trinity, a triune God consisting of three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay? And then in verse 20, so in 19 he says, go and make 
What? Disciples. Disciples. Unfortunately, most of what we see and most of what the church attempts is to make converts. Now, they can be the same thing, but unfortunately, in many cases, they're not. When you make a disciple, when you take the name disciple, what does that mean to you? Yeah, you're, you're a student of, you're under the authority of, uh, well, let's, let's, let's take Saul of Tarsus, for example. When he was growing up, he was a disciple. Who is he a disciple of? This is before Jesus, before he, all of this happened. This is when he was young. Who was he a disciple of? Gamaliel, one of the, the premier rabbis of his day, uh, still looked up to with admiration today. Uh, he studied under Gamaliel. So he was a disciple of Gamaliel. Now, when we go out to, to declare to the world the gospel, Unfortunately, most of what people do is want them to pray a prayer. And that's like setting someone on the starting blocks of a race and taking the gun and going home. Okay? We've done nothing to prepare them for the race. We haven't coached them. We haven't walked beside them. We haven't showed them the, the course, the, the rules. We've done none of that. We leave it to uh, others to do the discipling. Now, that's not to say that uh, <clears throat> you don't need help in discipling them. Um, there are those that are gifted in teaching and, and have a gift to um, teach disciples. And we'll get into this, this aspect of the gifts over the coming weeks as we go forward. But as we make disciples, it's not to get them to pray a prayer, <clears throat> pat them on the, ba the back, shake their hands, and move on. <clears throat> there needs to be teaching involved, and that's what Jesus says in verse 20. Now, back in 19, we believe that all Scripture is breathed of God and that it is applicable to us today. So when in 19, when he says, go, who is he talking to? Yeah, I mean, in the immediate passage, he's speaking to the, the apostles, but he's, and by the way, it wasn't just the 11 that were there. I, I can guarantee you that a number of the disciples that were gathered together in Jerusalem when he was crucified went with them because a lot of them were going back home. They were going back up to Galilee. Um, so he's speaking via the writing of Matthew under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit across the ages to us. So as we're living life, make disciples and baptize them and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Okay? This is what we are to teach them. Now, some people say, oh, okay, well then we can only teach what's in the Gospels. Now, back up to 19 again. We have a triune God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and under the inspiration of and the authority of the Holy Spirit, all Scripture came to be. All of it. Not just the Gospels. Okay? Um, there is no A and B in the writings. Some of them I look at and I go, I don't understand any of this. <laughs> you know? Um, I, even, you know, even some that are fairly simple, Okay, God, why did you choose to put this in here? Oh, because we need it. Because we need it. Okay? Um, so the, the Spirit writing out the very words of God through men under His inspiration speaks to us not just in the Gospels, but He speaks to us from Genesis all the way through to Revelation, from beginning to end. Okay? So, <clears throat> we are to teach them all that we have learned. So that's, that's what discipleship consists of. And in order that we would bear fruit, uh, the seed that we plant in good soil has to bear fruit as well. So the, the idea behind this is, as I have been discipled by some, 
and I am discipling others, those of you that have been discipled are supposed to start getting to the place where you can teach. Uh, the writer of Hebrews says, I've got many things that I'd like to tell you, but you're still infants. You, you haven't grown up yet. Put away the milk of the word. Take the meat. Get into the deep things of God. Okay? Um, and then he, he finishes this with, with the promise. Okay? He says, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you until God takes me up. No. Uh, I'm with you till, you know, the end of Israel as a nation. No. I'm with you until the temple fall. No. He says, I am with you always. That is something we should take great delight great joy and great comfort in. He is with you right now. Right now, in the midst of whatever is going on in your life, Jesus has promised he would be with you. Okay? And, and remember, uh, God is not a man that he should lie. Okay? So we take comfort with the fact that he is with us always to the end of the age, the age being the church age, the age, the dispensation of grace, uh, and that ending will be what I read earlier, uh, when God sets everything right. So now, as the body of Christ here, Jesus Community Church in Stevensville, Montana, what are we supposed to focus on? Now, we've, we've got a number of uh, things that which were discussed a few weeks ago and then again last week. Um, we talked about being involved, uh, not just internally, but, but externally. Uh, we are to go by the directive of Christ um, to spread the gospel, and that's really uh, a testimony of what God has done for us. Uh, we are to represent Christ to the community. Now that doesn't mean, uh, you know, when we do an event like a youth group did the, the Bible handing out a while back, uh, you know, and, and they show up and put on their Christ-like skins, <laughs> masks, and, and then, you know, as soon as that's done, you revert back to whatever you really are. Um, no, we are to represent Christ always. Um, <clears throat> Oh, I can see him, I can't remember his name. Will Rogers. Will Rogers said that you should treat your friends like family and your family like friends. And I think about that for a little bit. That is actually pretty profound. Okay. Because typically with our family, that's where we feel like we can just go bleh, be ourselves. You know, just let it all loose. And that is so absolutely wrong. I mean, we represent Christ first to our family. Okay? That's, that's the first thing that we do. So, after that, we represent Christ to those around us. Um, those you work with. Those that uh, you, you may have different things that you're involved in, sports or, or um, I'm sorry, Shelly, I can't remember the name of your group. Fiber Arts. Fiber Arts. Um, you represent Christ in everything you do. Now, that doesn't mean that you you know, there's, there's a phrase that I absolutely despise. I absolutely hate it when somebody says, I need me time. Please show me that in scripture. Okay. Well, there, I believe there is a me time, but it's not like we think. You look at the ministry of Jesus. He took a lot of me time. But what was that? That's right. Separating himself out, even from... The disciples, even from the twelve, even from the three, even from the one, 
And he got alone with God that he might get refreshed, re-energized, get built back up so that he might, might do those things that God had called him to do. So having done this, that's me time for us. That's what we should be having is me time. Now I'm not telling you, Shelly, you don't have to quit fiber, what was it, fiber arts? <laughs> fiber arts. I'm not saying you have to do that by any means. What I'm saying is um, we have a culture that has... Um, bred into us, has taught into us, has ingrained in us that we deserve. You deserve me time. You deserve this car. You deserve to be treated like such. Do you know what we truly deserve? What we, what we deserve is death. Yeah, we deserve to be forever separated from God, from our Creator. That's what we deserve. Okay, thank God for His mercy. Okay, because in His mercy, He does not give us what we deserve. Okay, but in His grace, He does give us that which we do not deserve. Okay, so um, segue off of me time back here. Uh, we represent Christ. We need to be involved in our community. Um, we need, and, and there are several ways that we can do that, and that's actually what I'm going to open up here in just a second. So there are a number of things that the church needs to be involved in externally. So here at Jesus Community Church, what are we going to be about? Not just internally. I think we've got a really cool identity internally. Um, I love this church. I've been in a lot of churches over the years. Yeah, a lot. And uh, I have never been in a church that was as gracious and as giving as Jesus Community Church. I've never been in a church that has been as welcoming and openly friendly as Jesus Community Church. Um, I think internally we have a unique identity. But what is our identity out there? What, what are we to look like out in the community? So, here's where it comes down to brass tacks. I've given you the generals. Uh, I've given you the areas that we need to focus on. Now I want you to kind of bring together the practicals. How do we do this? <coughs> Okay, so the first thing, spread the gospel. How do we, as Jesus Community Church, spread the gospel? With our lives. With our lives, okay, how so? Living it every day. We are the example. We are the example, that's what Paul says. I, I appreciate this because Paul, um, you read the writings of Paul, and, and he has an incredible understanding of who he is in Christ. And Paul, the one that not only persecuted the church, but brought death and prison to the church, um, he gets to the point in his walk where he says, follow me. But he doesn't stop there. Unfortunately, there is a cult of self in a lot of uh, Christian churches where the pastor will say, follow me. But that's not what Paul ends with. No, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. And by implication, that means there's accountability there. Because if Paul ceases to follow Christ, then those that are following him, they got to stop following him. they they got to give him up. Okay? So... Practical. How do we spread the gospel as Jesus Community Church? Yeah, we live it out in our lives. That's our witness. But uh, too many of us, excuse me, wait for people to come to us and ask us, um, hey, you're different. If we are different. Sometimes they have no clue that we're different. Okay? So practically, how do we spread the gospel? Question. You have a little question? Um, aren't we going to do cookies this year? 
No. No. That's actually part of what we're, we're going to talk about. Uh, every year for the last, uh, I don't know, eight or nine or ten years, uh, we have done a Halloween outreach uh, where we have uh, baked cookies, put them uh, in plates, and put tracks with them and an invitation to come to our church. Um, and we deliver them Halloween night. We take them out to people. We uh, pass out candy and tracks here at the church. Um, the, we are not doing that this year for a couple reasons. Uh, the first is it's not effective. There's no way to follow up with those people. Okay? You know, it, it's like a drive-by track deal. You know, um, it's not effective, okay? Because we can't just tell them, hey, I got good news for you. I mean, I got great news for you. Well, hey, Matt, what's up? Well, I'm never going to give her the good news. I'm never going to follow up with that. She's, she's over there all excited. Yay! He's got good news. Hey, what? By the way, um, I had the, the, the joy of going to watch the cops of girls play volleyball, and we have got some great volleyball players. Although I didn't see either one spike the ball. <coughs> and it was loud. I, I had the, I sat between the band and Riley, <laughs> and honestly, she was louder than the band. <laughs> if Monica warned me I should move. <laughs> oh, no, I got this. Okay. All right, so um, we are not doing that this year. Um, that's not to say we might not take it up again later, but there, it, it, it's ineffective because we're not having a way to follow up. Okay? If they don't come to our church, there's no fault. All right? So, that was a practical way that we were trying to spread the gospel. So, what are other things that we do um, to spread the gospel? What are things that we do reaching out to spread the gospel? What are things that we can do? Um, I can tell you two of the things that we've done this year. Uh, we had the Adams Road concert, um, and we actually did have quite a few Mormons here that evening. Um, for those of you that weren't here, Adams Road uh, is a group entirely made up of foremen, 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 former Mormons. Um, that uh, they've got an incredible testimony. Go to YouTube, uh, look up um, Micah Wilder. Uh, he was a Mormon missionary who was challenged by a Baptist pastor to read the Word of God as if you were a child. And that, that one question, one request by a pastor, has brought dozens, if not hundreds, of people out of the Mormon church. Okay? So uh, we had them come. It wasn't just a concert. They did do music, but between uh, every couple of songs, one of them would give their testimony, uh, how God had brought them out of Mormonism and, and into the truth of the Word of God. And so, you know, that was one way that we were reaching out to people. And the thing that was cool about that is everybody that came in was here because they knew somebody in this church that invited them to come. So now we have means to follow up. Okay. Now, uh, we had the disciple group as well. Um, they came out and I guess you could say they sang. Um, it, was, it was loud. And I couldn't understand the words, but, you know, the, the kids seemed to. Although I did notice that Thaddeus didn't answer me for like three days. I'd be like, hey, Satch! Um, and it was cool that we had uh, another church participate in that with us. Um, another thing that we do, um, we do the life chain. Uh, we stand up for life. Uh, how precious life is because the creator of all things created that life 
and God will not hold America guiltless uh, with the sin of abortion. Uh, that is the modern day uh, worship of Molech. So, um, but again, we don't have a lot of follow-up. So how do we implement the Great Commission making disciples? How, how do we do that? What, what are some practical things that we can do? I want your opinion. I want your insight. Now, keep in mind, if you share with me, you're committed. At least for the short term. Okay? And I know everybody just went, Word. I had a really good one, but no. Okay. And, and we do that all the time. Guys, I love you. Boy, it drives me to distraction when somebody comes up with a great idea and then disappears. What can we do? One thing internally we could do is make this church so welcoming, comfortable, and relevant that anyone who comes through that door can't help but come back. Yes. Yes. And that takes focus. Um, although, you know, the first time I came... Mary Lou met me at the door. <laughs> wow, I was overwhelmed. Um, seriously, for like the next three years, I avoided her. That's hard to do. Laugh all the time. It is hard to do. Um, so, um, but yeah, be welcoming. Be inviting. Um, you know, Nobody's expecting you to be a social butterfly. I'm a social mom. You know, I just kind of flutter around here and there and, and you know, again, you know, I didn't really talk to anybody outside of my family until I was probably in my 30s uh, and didn't speak a whole lot of it in my family. Um, if God can... I think he said God. Uh, you guys heard that, right? Okay. Okay. Um, if God hadn't changed me, if God hadn't made me change, if he didn't make me change, um, I certainly wouldn't be up here. Uh-uh. No way. I still get sick to my stomach every Sunday. I'm always hoping there's one more song. <laughs> Even when I've listened to the practice the rehearsal, and I know that's the last song. I'm hoping that the spirit will move on Steve and, and just maybe go through it again. Um, so, internally, and that, that really is, it has to do with our nature, um, but that is something that we can do as people come into this church. Greet them friendly, be welcoming. Tell them you're glad that they're here. And don't do it like this. Hey. Man, I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> you know, um, if, if you get stressed with that, come get me. And we'll be anxious together <laughs> as we welcome them. Okay? Uh, but definitely, that is an attribute that uh, <clears throat> we can always improve on. Okay? Um, mill around, mill around. But when the shofar blows, find your seat. <laughs> Sit down, okay? Um, so, yes, any other, th any other thoughts? What can we do, practically? Mike? Cultivating personal relationships. You betcha. Cultivating personal relationships. And that goes back to verse 19. As you are living life, as you are going about doing your things. Be honest and sincere about your faith. Okay? You don't have to be a holy role. All you need is to be converted to Christ's likeness. Okay? You, you have to reflect Christ to the people around you. He, he's told you, don't worry about what you're going to say. I'll give you the words to say. All you got to do is Say it, okay? Let Christ so permeate your life that it oozes out of every conversation, every interaction, 
you know. Um, I don't know what it was about silver trucks this week, but every time I went anywhere, I got behind a silver truck that refused to go above 45. <laughs> I want to lose Christ likeness as I'm following at 45 in a 65 zone. I need Christ likeness when I'm stuck going 45 in a 65. But that should so permeate us that it's a natural part of who we are. Okay? That when somebody tells us that, that, that something good has happened to them, that our first thought would be to praise God. Man, isn't God good? Isn't he good? Okay. Um, okay, so what else? What practical things can we do? Come on. Testify. Testify. Yes. That's something that nobody can take away from you. And the enemy desperately wants to take away from you what God has done for you. He wants you to doubt it. He wants you to question it. He wants you to think, oh, maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not saved. Your testimony is what happened between you and happens between you and God. Okay. Um, I know what I was before Christ saved me. I know what I was like. I know what my children were like before God got a hold of them. Um, that's a testimony. That's a testimony of the greatness of God. What he has done for you, to you, and through you. Okay. What else? What else? Stop and pray with people. Stop and pray with people? At that moment, not that night. Stop and pray then. Right, in the moment. Uh, okay, yeah, because I'm thinking, you know, it, it'd be kind of weird walking down Super 1 and you just, yeah. oh, you like strawberry preserves, huh? And then you start praying. <laughs> which, which, hey, not to live it, because God very, may, very well may tell you, tell you to do that. Okay? Um, he's told me to do that once, and boy, was it awkward. It really was. But I did it because he said to do it. All right? So um, pray with them. I saw Angie, your hand. A lot of Mike said relationships, but it's like making time to follow up. He said follow up. With yes. People. Like when you're talking to them, yep. that somehow you make time in some way, call them or yep. get together with them or yep. build that Further, yes. On. Further that opportunity. Um, All of these things take forethought. Okay? All of these things require that we are aware of and following through, following up on. Uh, one of the things that I really try to do, I'm not really great with names, so I apologize, especially to those of you that have been coming the last few weeks. Um, if I get your name wrong or I just can't remember it, I apologize. Uh, but one of the things that I really try to do is I try to remember one or two things that we talked about in our conversation. So the next time I see you, I can ask, hey, how's this going? All right? That requires that you listen. Okay? It requires that you're paying attention to them. Don't, don't feel like that um, because you have an opportunity that you have to dominate the conversation about Christ. Listen to them. Find out what their need is and then see how Christ will meet that need. Pray about it. And, and just, Brian, right? <laughs> Just like Brian said, pray then. Pray then. Okay? Uh, even if they seem to be uncomfortable with it, pray then. Um, <laughs> is this another little question? Uh -huh. Okay. I don't think that cookie is that bad. You don't think it's that bad? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will say that I've asked a lot of people with that one, too. And especially those little ladies that are all by themselves in those apartment buildings on Middle Bird Fork, that's when their doors are open to give candy. And they aren't used to receiving anything. So I actually like going to that building. And I've opened my big fat mouth, and I'm going to go do it anyway. <laughs> you, that is because absolutely fine. It was, it, it's a way that you're blessing somebody else. Mm -hmm. You're not asking for it in return, but our prayers 
cover those cookies. Yeah. And you just never know what door you're going to open. And they're all by themselves, and you might have made their day. Yep. Suggestion? Bring a notebook. Get names exactly. and numbers. Exactly. And then follow up. And then follow up. I say maybe not do 100, maybe we do 50 and follow up. Okay. That's just my idea. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, you know, I, but the, the other side of this is, why wait till Halloween? Right. Exactly. Well, you know, I mean, get together. Make some cookies. Take them. You know? Um, and, and make sure they see it's cookies as you're coming up and not, you know, suits and ties and, you know. Um, but take advantage of it. We, we chose Halloween because people are expecting people to knock on their door and, and you know. Um, so, absolutely. But don't wait for Halloween. Do it whenever. Do it frequently. 2344 Old West Trail. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else? What else? All right. Now, this is not the end of what we're talking about. Okay. <laughs> What we're going to do next week starting, we're going to go through the spiritual gifts. Um, again, I would encourage you to read Ephesians 4, uh, Romans 12, and 1 Corinthians 12. So you have an idea of what we're going to be talking about. Uh, and I'll let you, I'll forewarn you right now. What I'm going to be speaking on uh, is what I see these things as being. There are going to be other people that are going to go, oh no, I, you know, um, uh, wisdom. And knowledge, the gift of wisdom and the gift of knowledge. You, you might have exactly the opposite of what I have. But you're going to get an idea of how this thing is, is going to be used. And, and hopefully what this will do is you'll start connecting the dots as to how God has gifted you so that you uniquely fit into the body of Christ to make it function better. Okay? Because the, the end result of all of this is to get you up out of the seat and involved in the things of God, okay? And, and even, uh, I know this is a scary thought for some of you, but even outside of ladies Bible study or brothers meeting or, or, or old prayer meeting, I want you guys to know I have been praying that God's going to bring more of you in to lift up the burdens and the needs of this church. So when God starts tapping on your head, listen, because if you don't listen to the tap, he'll bring a two by four, <laughs> okay? So, all right, um, we're going to stop right there.